Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am back with another video for Winnie and Walter and today we're going to be talking about stamping in shapes. This is one of my favorite techniques to do because it's a wonderful way to stretch the use of those stamps and your dies as well. Plus it's really fun to build up your images in different shapes. This card I'm doing today is in the shape of a heart. I've done this before, so I wanted to be able to bring it to you again, just on a much smaller scale. So first up, we have the Winnie and Walter in bloom. This is the Ashley Rosie's Posies with L Lydia Evans. Say that 10 times fast. And I really enjoy the stamp set. This is actually a stamp layering stamp set, but I, it has the outline shape so you can use it for coloring, which is what I'm going to be doing here today. Now they're, for the most part, they're lined up on the backing sheet the way that they're intended to be used. However, Winnie and Walter has on their website, a sheet you can print out that shows you exactly how these are to go together. I typically print these out and laminate them and I put them in um, in a binder so I can reference them whenever I need to. They're really handy. It takes out a lot of that guesswork. I also really enjoy the sentiments in the stamp set and this has the cutaway dies available with it as well. The next up, we're going to be using the True Dotty Heart Cutaway Die Set. I'm actually just going to be using that scalloped one there. This one is really fun. It has the three hearts. Those two smaller hearts will fit inside that scallop die. You don't need to use them all together, but I love how this was designed. Again, we're just going to be using that scallop die. I am showing you the Georgette border cutaways. However, I'm not going to use that today. I thought that I would. I like to do faux borders and faux frames with dies on my cards. It just didn't end up working it out, out that way, but this is still a fun di uh, die set, so it's definitely worth it. I'm also showing you the Scenery Seeing Hearts stamp set. If you've been following along with my series here, you have seen this before. I've used this a ton the last couple times because I just love it. I love the big background stamp. I love the separated little hearts. I love that strip border. It's just a fantastic set. I don't use it here today, but I had planned on it. Regardless, it's still a great stamp set, folks. So the first thing that I did was I took some graphics acetate and I took that scallop die and I ran it through my die cutting machine and I made a stencil out of it. I prefer acetate, but you could totally use cardstock if you would like. I generally use the acetate so it lasts longer for one thing. Another thing is I can put some Tombow Mono Multi Glue behind this and I can let it dry and then I, it's, it turns into a temporary tack. So I can put this down on my card panels and use it for ink blending if I want. I keep both the positive and the negative, but I'm just going to be using the negative here today. Now I did trace this out on a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock to begin with, and I moved it over to the right hand side of the panel. This is cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but then I decided it was too far over. So I'm going to flip it over here and I'm going to retrace the inside of this heart. I am lining it up on my grid pad here so I can make sure when I place this, I have it nice and straight. And I am going to temporarily secure it with some post-it labeling tape. You don't need to do this. It's just something I do so it doesn't move around it too much. And that way I don't get pencil where I don't want it to. So I'm going to line this up and I'm, I kind of thought that I would move it closer to the right Again, just not as far as I had the first time. Really what I should have done was just centered it on the panel, but whatever, it ends up working out in the end anyways. So now I'm gonna secure the stencil itself with some more post-it labeling tape, and then I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna trace on the inside of this. Now it is scalloped, and you don't have to be too precise with it. You just need to have that general shape of a heart. So now that I have my heart traced on there, I am going to put this in my Misty stamping tool. You could totally use uh, an acrylic block if you would like. I prefer the Misty. That way, if I need to double stamp the images, I can. So what I'm doing is I'm literally following the shape of the heart with the shapes of my flowers. So this flower in particular is kind of on the round side. So I'm going to have it up there on the curve of that heart. And I am going to work from right to left on this heart and just get those images to fit where I need them to fit. 
I am using the Ink on 3 Blackout Ink because this is a Copic friendly ink and I am going to be doing some Copic coloring. So after I stamped my first image, I cover it up with my mask and I just build it out from there. So the leaves are perfect for that bow on the inside of that heart. Um, they're great for down there at the point of the heart. I just continue to follow the shape of my heart or whatever shape that you're, you're stamping in. You just want to follow it. So whatever image is going to work in that, just, just go with that. Take it maybe one at a time, take it a couple at the time, a couple at a time. Now I've done this enough that I'm pretty familiar with how the placement is going to work. So I can generally get a few more stamps on there, but I still have to kind of move things around a little bit and see how it's going to stamp before I actually commit to it. So it's generally no big deal. Now I have this sped up really, really fast because it is, regardless of how often you do this, this is still time consuming. There is quite a bit of stamping. So I have this sped up really fast, but it took me probably, I don't know, probably about 35 minutes to get this stamped out. I personally think it's totally worth it because I think, you know, like, as I said, stamping in shapes is just super fun. I also make sure that I have a bunch of masks cut out before I get started. Now I had played around with a stamp set before I actually started making this card. So some of my masks had already been used, but it's really helpful to make sure you already have them cut out before you stop, start stamping. That way you don't have to stop what you're doing, cut out some masks and then keep going. That helps a bunch. So I'm going to finish this up here and I'm just moving around some of these masks where I need them so I didn't have to cut out too many. So now I'm going to get started on the coloring and for my leaves I'm going to start with a B23, G12, and G14. Now there are different shapes of leaves in here. You could definitely use different colors of greens to make them all look a little bit different. I didn't worry about it. There's enough leaves on here and this is going to be certainly busy enough when it's all colored in that nobody's going to notice the difference anyways. Also I'm going to be bringing in some colored pencils and I can definitely change up the variation and color at that point too, but you really don't need to worry about it. So now I have all of the leaves cut in. That was really basic coloring. Now I'm going to start coloring in some of these flowers for those uh, big three or three big flowers like this one that I'm starting on right here. That's going to be a V12, a Y13 and a Y13. Again, I'm going to be bringing in some colored pencils. Lately, I have been over the moon for color theory. I, I don't know what it is. I haven't thought about color theory in years, probably since I was, probably since I worked in the salon and was a stylist and had to do hair color. I have not thought about color theory, but lately I've been a really over the moon for it. So I've been doing a lot of research on different Copic colors that you can use as a, as a blending group. It saves you a little bit of time. Plus it looks really cool because you don't have to keep building up those deep, bold colors if you don't want to. Now that's definitely one of my favorite looks. I've been coloring like that forever and ever. So this is actually a change for me and I'm not knocking the traditional way, but I have been digging this lately. So that's what I'm going to do on this whole entire card panel today is I'm going to use colors that actually uh, blend it together, but not, not as you're used to. If you've been watching my videos lately, then this probably isn't anything new to me, new to you. If you haven't been, what I'm doing is this. So I'm mapping out my shadows with the V12. Now this is going to be a yellow flower. Well, at the end of the day, it's going to be more of a gold flower, but to begin with, it's going to be a yellow flower. So the opposite of yellow is violet. And by using the violet is my shadow color. It actually just adds depth. What it's doing is desaturating as opposed to saturating. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. Right now you think I'm out of my mind because I'm using a V12. It's not very dark, but watch what happens when I go over the top of it with this Y15. It actually it gets darker. Now I do make sure that I extend that Y15 out past the V12 because not only am I putting it over the V12 to make 
that V12 my shadow color, but I still need to use this Y15 as my mid-tone color. So I need to stretch that out past that V12 just a wee bit. Now I am coloring from the center of those petals towards the tips and from the tips towards the center. You certainly don't have to do that. That is definitely extra work, especially when you have three of the same flower to color in. I just like how those darker tips on those petals, how they fold back and it definitely makes the, the flower itself look more curved. I dig that. That's one of my favorite things to do with flowers. But again, you don't have to do that. Plus when we start bringing in the colored pencils, it's a little bit more work yet. What I am also making sure that I do, and I'm actually going to show you a really good shot of this. I, I actually bring, hold the, the card panel up to the camera and I point out to you exactly what I did so you can see the little details in that because I do think that this does make a big difference. I am making sure where I can see how those petals dip, how it has those natural bends at the tips of those petals. I'm making sure that I leave a break there because I want those to actually look like they're pointed up because they're going to be a highlight. And I'm bringing in my Y13 right now. And I'm going over just a little bit of that Y15, nothing where I had done the V12, just a tiny bit on the Y15 in any white space. Now that I now because I left all those breaks in those petals, you can see them right there. Because I left all those breaks in the petals, it looks like they actually peak instead of dip. And that's what I was going for. I wanted to have those uh, lighter, uh, brighter highlights to that. Now I colored in all three of those the same and I'm gonna show you this flower and I have several more on here that are gonna be colored in the same. I'm starting with the B20, or I'm sorry, the BV23 and I'm mapping this out just like I had done the other three flowers. These flowers actually, I love the colors on how they turned out, but if I were to do them again, I would do them a little bit different. You see how far I'm bringing in the tips of those uh, those shadows? If I were to actually do this again, I would not bring them in that far. I gave myself a little too much uh, shadow and dimension, and I think that it makes them look just a wee bit funny when they're all colored in but whatever. Mistakes happen. Decisions were made. Mistakes happen. Moving forward. Now that I have the BV23, I'm bringing in the R22 and I'm going over everything I had done with the BV23. And again, it's the same thing as with the yellow flowers. I'm just extending that out just a wee bit more. This is my mid-tone color. Now you're probably thinking R22 is actually a red and you are correct. It is a red. However, when I'm done coloring these in, these flowers are actually going to read pink. That's the other thing. If I were to redo this card, I would I would keep the red and the pink flowers and I would probably do those yellow ones and blue green instead of the yellow. I think overall I wasn't like over the moon for this particular color combination, but again, whatever, we're going to move on. After I had the R22, I went over everything with the R20. And again, I just stuck to those highlights in a wee bit over the R20, R22. Now I'm working on my red flowers and I started with the BV25, went to an R29 and now an R27. It might be hard to tell in the video folks, but in in real life and up close and personal, you can definitely see the difference in the color variation. You can see the darks, the mids and the highlights. And I'm gonna reinforce that that much more when we start bringing in the colored pencils, which I'm going to do right now. I did end up having to add a couple more red flowers to this to balance it out there on the right hand side and the very tip. I hadn't originally stamped those, so I had to take a moment and do that, but that was no big deal. Now I have a Prismacolor Black Grape colored pencil. Now this is a dark purple, a very dark purple colored pencil. However, it doesn't read dark on the or dark purple on the flower. It actually reads uh, as a very dark red. You have the BV25 and the R29 on there. And between those two, once you put the uh, black grape over the top of it, you can't even tell it's purple but it's gorgeous for adding those really deep dark shadows that you just can't quite get with a Copic marker. 
I am also I'm making sure that my pencils are super duper sharp. I actually don't have a lot left of this black grape because it keeps breaking. I'm pretty sure uh, it was dropped at some point. So the lead is just broken to pieces on the inside of it. I have to sharpen this constantly because I lose the tip of my pencil. But I still need to make sure that these are super sharp. I want to get into there to the finest details. Now, you certainly don't have to put this much work and this much attention into your flowers, folks. It's just something that I like to do. I think it makes such a huge difference at the end of the day. Okay, so once I had all the black grape colored in on all of those flowers, I now have a dark purple Prismacolor pencil. And again, we're here with the purple, but I swear you can't even tell that this is purple. It's just going to look like a mid-tone red. So now I'm going to take that same dark purple and I'm going to go into the shadow areas on my pink flowers. And you might be wondering why I'm not using a uh, dark pink or something like that. It's actually, it plays really well with these red tones. And you're, you're going to actually see that here in just a moment. As soon as I'm done coloring in with the dark purple, I'm going to bring in a carmine or a light carmine, I believe. And I'm going to go over the top of this dark purple, plus blend it out a little bit in to my mid tones. And this is, again, it's still going to read as a pink pink flower. I think the purple makes all the difference as opposed to just going in straight pink. Again, we're looking for the desaturated uh, look as opposed to the oversaturating and just, you just keep getting, uh, you're going darker with the red, but you can only go so dark with the red. If you bring in a complementary color or the opposite color, you're actually going to get that true depth and dimension that you're looking for. So that's what I'm doing here. I think this is at the point where I probably could have saved these flowers with all of them, with all of the shadows, but I was just trucking along on this and just adding those in there and not even paying attention. Again, I think if I were to do this again, I wouldn't extend those out quite as far as I did. I don't think... I'm certainly not going for a natural look, but I don't think that that helped my cause at all. I think there's just way too many waves. I can't think of a single flower in nature that probably has this many waves, but I don't know. Who knows? Maybe there are flowers and I just don't know. Okay, so this is where I'm bringing in the carmine red and I'm again, I'm going right over the top of that dark purple and I'm extending it out just a little bit more. Instead of leading, leaving those tips of those petals of that uh, brighter uh, pink color, I am going to go over the top of those with the carmine and kind of darken those up a little bit. I also am not using a ton of pressure right away. I do go over these a couple of different times until I get the amount of color on my card panel that I want to. You don't need to do that, folks. You don't need to go in with a super duper heavy hand. What happens when you color pencil or use colored pencils on any paper is it has to break down the fibers in order for that pigment to get in the fibers so you can actually uh, build that color up. If you try to do that too much right out of the gate, you get to the point where you cannot add any more color over the top of that. Now, Prismacolors are known for that white waxy bloom. Uh, if you get too much color on them, that's normal because they are made out of wax and it can only, you can, you can only add so much wax. I guess is what I'm trying to say, folks. So eventually it does kind of turn white and you can't add any more top on top of it and it looks awful. So you, in order to prevent that, you need to make sure that you go in with a fairly light hand to begin with and work your way out or work your way up to that darker color. So now that I have that one done, those other ones are going to get colored in the same and look at the difference on those. At this point, you can definitely see a pretty big contrast between the yellow flowers and the red and the pink ones. So the red and pink have all of the, the detail added to them with the colored pencils. Those yellow ones don't. I'm not going to walk you through the yellow ones. I did all of that off camera because at this point, You've been there and done that and you've seen exactly what I'm getting at. Now look how much darker those yellow ones look. 
here on the video, I actually, I like the color of these, uh, all of these together in real life. Before I sent it out the door with my daughter, I kind of looked at it like, meh, I would totally do this different. Anyway, moving on. Now I'm going to add a drop shadow to this and I'm instead of my typical grays, I'm going to use some BVs. I have the BV00, BV02, and a BV04. I mapped it out with the BV00. Now I'm bringing in my BV04 and just adding in those darkest areas there. I am gonna blend this out quite a bit, so I am going fairly heavy with this BV04. Typically, I don't go that heavy with my darkest color, but we have a lot of color going on in this panel anyway, and also I want that blue violet to really pop behind this. So I'm going fairly heavy. I'm not extending them too far. I'm just making sure that there's a good solid coat of color on there. Now I'm bringing in my BV02 and I'm extending those lines out, blending it out just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bring in my BV00 and my colorless blender. You could definitely skip the colorless blender, but I wanted to blend this out just a wee bit more and kind of diffuse some of those hard edges. And also I think that it looks a little bit more natural that way. I also didn't record me filling in the centers of those flowers. So what I did on those is I used a brown, a three different color brown colored pencils on the pink flowers. And I will have these colors listed over on my blog if you're interested in them. I did green on the inside of those yellow flowers to kind of bring in some of that greenery to the center of my heart here. And then I did yellow on those red ones. If I were to restamp this, I would definitely make sure that there was a little bit more yellow peeking out there because I think it would have looked really cool but no harm no foul we're good to go I also thought that I would do a faux frame on this and I ended up changing my mind and then I decided that I was going to trim down the one side of this so this heart was a little bit more centered on it and then I would just put it on a card panel that way and then my oldest daughter came into my room and told me that she needed a note card and then she eyeballed this one so I ended up cutting this down to four by four inches and then I mounted it on a top folding note card that was four by four inches as well and then she went out the door with it I took pictures and then she went out the door with it so that's pretty much how it ended up being a little note card if you wanted to make this a traditional a2 size card you could totally mount this on whatever card base that you would like either side fold or top cold top fold you could stamp your sentiment on the bottom of it right there underneath it or you could stamp the sentiment on it just how i did mount it to your card base and call it good I did add a few embellishments to this and I skipped the majority of them. I do show you one, but I do skip some of it because I was trying to get some of this video down to a reasonable length. This was about two hours worth of work for this card. So I, I had to get rid of a whole bunch of that. I did use a clear secure jelly roll pin on the inside of those flowers to give them a little bit of dimension. I didn't add any uh, shimmer or glitter to any of the petals. I felt like there was so much going on and plus I wanted to be able to do this I did not want to add any more glitter to it this is the Sakura black jelly jelly roll glaze pin and I'm just going around and adding dots it kind of helps fill in some of those spaces and kind of helps even it out a wee bit more I did stamp the hello sentiment crooked there on a, the bottom of this again I mounted this to a top folding card base and called it good all right, folks, we are done. We are good to go. This was take three for Winnie and Walter. I have one more for you next week, and I will have a giveaway for you as well. It's a $30 gift card to Winnie and Walter, so do be sure to follow along. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.